everybody. Good evening, everybody from Finland. We are actually in two different locations with uh, Mare Kaisa. And first, a uh, couple of words about ourselves. My name is Aniko Lehtinen. I'm a beer expert and a journalist and the chairperson of Olut Liitto, which is the beer consumer union in Finland. And I mainly work with beer. I uh, write about beer. I'm the chief editor of the only beer magazine in Finland. I've been writing a lot of books about beer and my speciality is actually beer and food. So I do a lot of beer and food tastings, a lot of uh, beer and food uh, lectures and a um, lot of cooking with beer and stuff like that. And the other thing, uh, my speciality is beer travel. So with uh, my friend, the journalist Maria Marcus, we do a lot of like beer trip uh, books, uh, social media and stuff like that. And I'm also um, a trained brewer. So, um, and I've been brewing beer in a big, fa big brewery and a really small brewery as well. Now, Mario guys. Oh, hello to everybody. Hope you all have something malty to drink. Kippis, as we say in Finland. Mm. I'm having sahti now. And I have been having sahti for 35 years. <laughs> I have been brewing sahti for 35 years also. I learned it from my uh, late uh, uh, husband. Uh, how to how to drink and how to brew it and uh, now i'm um, passing the skills forward and teaching other people how to make it and i've been also brewing in, in commercial breweries but mainly small ones but this sati is my thing and you can see behind me there is marikaisa sati mm -hmm. <laughs> the picture is from uh, Lamiervi, where I am right now. The lake is just uh, four meters from this, where I sit. Maybe you see, there it is. <laughs> the same lake. And we've been preparing a little presentation for you as well, because we think that pictures always a good help to see, I mean, what is Sahti? So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Do you guys see? Everybody's seeing this one. Um, so Sahti is something which is in our heritage. Um, it's at least 2000 year old style. And we are really proud of it in Finland because it's, I would say it's in our blood almost. And um, <laughs> it's an Asian type of farmhouse ale. And it's very different from like, uh, I would say uh, everyday beer. If, if you look at the taste, but it's part of the Finnish culture. And if we look back in the history, I mean, in Finland, we've been brewing beer or sahti as long as we stayed here in Finland. So it's part, it's been part of our kind of a, a drinking habit since the beginning. And in Finland, I mean, normally uh, beer was and sahti was made at home. So um, it was a low scale uh, industry. We didn't have big breweries until the 19th century. So this was really kind of a homemade product always. And I think partly of that, for that reason, we have uh, like with Sahti, the methods are really traditional. And if you look at these pictures, these are from the beginning of uh, 19th century. And actually we use quite a similar uh, vessels to do sahti nowadays even. But here in the bigger picture, you see a very traditional way to make sahti with hot stoves. And maybe Mario Kaiser tell us a little bit about that because it's still, people are using that way. 
Yeah, uh, some people, uh, and okay. only only one um, commercial brewery uses uh, stones, and uh, they usually use the stones nowadays just to um, do the final uh, warming up, so that. Uh, <coughs> um, when the stones, they are very, very hot, like red hot. So uh, the word uh, kind of... Boils. Uh, boils, but uh, yeah, boils, but uh, the mush uh, grabs in, into the stones. So they kind of burn a little bit. So they give a little smoky uh, taste to the beer. I've done it sometimes and it's it's very mm, impressive to do it because when you put the really hot sto stones into the vert, then the, it, it's like a little vol volcano, but it boils quickly. And this is actually a very ancient type of uh, beer brewing. I mean, not just sahti, but beer brewing in general to use hot souls. And as you see in the bigger picture, I mean, that's something that we, we've been doing in Finland. And as Maria Kassi said, some people, I mean, just like some people are still doing it. And um, mainly if you look at the sahti vessels, I mean, the, the where we have been doing sahti, we've been mainly using wooden, uh like equipments so that's why um uh these are the most traditional ones but of course nowadays um uh, we also use steel but the yeah. vessels itself are really similar yeah you will see later in the pictures mm -hmm. and uh, the other thing is uh when we talk about sahti because it, it was primarily made at home and still is, it's interesting that, I mean, women were the ones who were brewing sahti because it was part of the household, brewing beer or brewing sahti. It was part of the household keeping. So uh, when women were making food, they were, also, they were also making beer and sahti. And we have, for example, we have our national epos called Kalevala, which um, gathers around a lot of Finnish mythical songs and, and how the world was made and, and these kind of myths of Finland. And the beer brewing is one of the main themes of Kalevala. So it, it was really important for the ancient Finns. And I think, uh, Aniko, I think that uh, one third of uh, Kalevala uh, tells about how to brew yeah. uh, beer. That is sahti. Exactly. Yeah. But even in Kalevala, the brewers always are females, never men. So, I mean, this always been a very important part of the household. Okay. I mean, free, free, uh, feel free to ask if you have something to ask. We can have some questions in afterwards, but then, I mean, if you have something to ask, just ask it. Ask or add. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, then, how does uh, Sahti difference from nowadays beers? What do you say, Maria Kaisa? Yeah. Um, Sahti is very, very malty. As you see from the figures there, uh, it's, you can really taste the molds. And uh, like uh, the Sahti style, we make here in, in Veikkola in southern Finland, um, we have about 80 percent, uh, 80 or 90 percent of barley malt and, and uh, 10 to 20 of rye malts. And you really can taste them. And then it's also very, very original gravity is, gravity is twice as higher than in, let's say, lagers. And then this is very strong beer. Uh, the minimum must be six percent by volume, but usually we have like eight, very often also ten, sometimes even more. And then 
this is very still. This has not, not uh, carbonic acid at all. So it's easy to drink and healthy also in that way. And um, fermenting aromas, you get a lot to this. Um, also from, you know, from especially the baking yeast that we used, it gives the aromas. And then uh, maybe you see, I don't know, it's, this is not clear and it's not filtered. So it has also a, a special viscosity. Like it's not, uh, it's moving a little bit slow, slower than lager or any other uh, normal peers. So um, this is also a fresh product. This will not last long. Of course, we drink it usually very often, but uh, uh, it's best to drink it because it's, it's only good for one to two weeks since it's ready. And this has also a lot of energy, uh, which means that you can easily have a, a big sahti uh, happening day and you can only drink sahti and you are still okay. Mm. Keep this. <laughs> and there's already a question, Marikaisa, that what type of yeast is used? Uh, as I told, uh, it's a bake, baking yeast. It's fresh. Uh, normally we use fresh, fresh yeast. Uh, some, sometimes also dried baking yeast. And uh, earlier times people used to gather, gather the yeast in their vessels or they left them uh, kind of not so clean. Yeah. But nowadays, everybody cleans vessels pretty good and then use commercial baking yeast. But then there is something called the women's sahti. What is that? Ah, some people think that um, women's sahti is uh, weaker, only like 6% or something. But uh, the women's sahti that I've got, was the strongest. So who knows? <laughs> but actually in the history, I mean, a couple hundred years back, they do had women's safety because that was the one they, I mean, even children was drinking because I mean, then water wasn't that safe. So normally, I mean, children were drinking like really light safty or light beer and they call it, called it like women's safty, the light, ver light version, let's say. Hmm. When, when what was the like the everyday version of sahti and actually the name itself sahti it's hmm. uh well we of course we don't know for sure where it comes from but um uh, there's like a couple of possibilities and one possibility is actually that it comes from the swedish word saft which me which means nowadays uh juice they used to mean all kind of uh, drinking, drinking uh, like like alcoholic drink, like mead, uh, beer, whatever. So uh, that's one possibility because I mean, in the Finland area, we used to be part of Sweden for 500 years. And then um, uh, a lot of the people were speaking Swedish as well. So that's one possibility that one where the Sahti name comes from. Herlinda, you have a question. Just put your mic on. Uh, okay. Morning. Morning from California. <laughs> uh, I have no sati. Unfortunately, I'm too far away from Finland right now. Um, <laughs> speaking of women's sati, I believe Kaisa, Sati Kaisa, mm -hmm. you actually won the national sati competition before. Am I correct? Yes. And do many women win that and how long has that competition been going on well the competition has been going on for 30 years and we have had female winners like uh, eight or something i it's not no i didn't didn't count but um i believe um, for some reasons at home women make the sati 
but they are not so eager to participate in, uh, to competitions. I don't know why. But the, here I see a question from um, from from EBCU. <laughs> <laughs> that the, is there an other type of beer, maybe from another country that is similar to in, in taste to sahti? Yeah, answer is yes. Huh. Uh, our sahti society society have been traveling to uh, nearby countries, and like in um, Estonia, they have similar uh, beer called uh, Koduolu. It's a little bit like this, but they have um, kind of ruined it because they uh, you are now allowed to use whatever you want there. Uh, in, in Finland, uh, brewing sahti is very strict how, to, how you make it, but you'll hear it later. And then also in, in Sweden, they have this drink called Rikku that is I think even more similar to Sahti than um, Estonia's uh, Koduolu, but unfortunately, they also allow you to put uh, um, mead in it or even sugar. And that's uh, for us, we, we call it kill you, so something <laughs> not Sahti at all, not beer at all. Anyway, and then also in Norway, no, I don't remember the name of that beer, but uh, they also allow using uh, meat. So mm -hmm. at least lo those countries have. And then there's another question, Lisa, that was the natural yeast used more or less similar to the quake yeast form used in Norway? I believe that that, that is the case. That yeah. is the case. And we still have in the museums, we still have some equipments that you can see that actually there is the ye the dry yeast is on, on that. And actually, I know one brewer who brewed home sahti with that yeast. It was really different from, from the sahti we make normal nowadays because, of, of course, the yeast is so different. <laughs> and it was more like a little bit like quake. Yeah. And um, I took part to um, a study here in, in Finland with uh, yeast studiers and uh, uh, we brewed uh, Sahti Vert together and then they used uh, different old yeasts from other countries mm -hmm. and, and then tasted them and, and said that uh, it's kind of mm, bad for Sahti culture that we use the commercial sati because mm. uh, then all the effects are the same in our satis nowadays. But earlier it was totally, it was a big variety because of the uh, uh, collected um, yeast. Yeah, so actually it was, it was a big change, but, but I, I believe it was because it was so much easier to use the baking yeast than to gather the, 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 like the former yeast. So that's why the, like the, this original yeast kind of disappeared in time. Yeah. Easier and also more clean. So you could uh, get um, more um, sati that was not kind of ruined by wild yeast. Yeah. Do you have a new question, Herr Linda? Uh, put your mic on. Yeah. How did you how did you know? <laughs> um, so okay, so Sati started two thousand years ago, at least, mm. at least, mm. at least that we know of. That's true, right? Because how much they probably weren't recording all their their parties like we do now, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> which is probably a good thing. But uh, so who actually started making the uh, like what people? Like, I mean, I know, I, you, know, you know, you hear it being called Viking brew. I'm sorry, I'm still in my pajamas this morning, but um, no problem. <laughs> I, I could drink it. Then, but. So, you know, you hear it called Viking brew, but was it actually, you know, like Viking families or, or, or was it like um, um, Swami? I, I, I know there's like another, another name for like even the older uh, peoples of Finland as well. Oh. It's, it's really hard to, of course, to see because in the Finland area, area before the Finns 
they've been living in other nations as well. And then uh, the Sami people has been living actually until South Finland in Finland. So the Sami people were kind of pushed up north. But uh, probably uh, we uh, started to brew beer when we had new people coming from Central Europe. It's the same actually with Sweden uh, because they had the ability to, um, to ferment. They, they had the knowledge. And I mean, if we go back 2000 years and even more, it is, I mean, it's really different because of course uh, people were making mead, people were making all kinds of fermented beverages because it was how they preserved things. So we can say, I mean, we do know that they made beer because they used barley and they probably uh, made sahti because they used uh, juniper branches mm. because that's one of the main differences between beer and sahti that you use juniper branches with sahti. And even in Kalevala, our mythical epos told that we used to have used to use uh, juniper branches. So probably that's like the oldest part because actually hoppy beers in Finland came later on. They came, uh, I would say um, the uh, uh, kind of when we started the um, to actually, uh, you know, to farm country, to farm land, and 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 like state still. So, may, so it's probably say, you know, kind of a mix of everything. Yeah, um, I, I think many of you know um, beer and whiskey guru Michael Jackson. He was a very very keen enthusiast of sati, and he said that uh, made with ancient traditional method. Sahti is the missing link between ancient beer in Mesopotamia and nowadays industrial beers. And he also said, this I like very much, Sahti is a glass of anthropology. Yes, that is true. Yeah. yeah. And then he said that one of the 10 beers to take with to a deserted island. Is sahti. <laughs> and he also said that in Sahti, you can taste the, the roots of mm -hmm. Finland. Yes, but we have to remember at the same time that sati is actually a regional product. So not all, all parts of Finland we brew sati. So it's just a basically um, typical for uh, like a couple areas in Finland. So it's not something the whole Finland was brewing. But then we have to remember that sati and beer used to be really close to each other when we were brewing at home. So, I mean, there's like the hoppiness or the use of uh, juniper berries were the difference, but the other ingredients were like really close to each other. Then there is, uh, Brett is asking, is sahti served in cask, barrel, keg, can, or bottle? Well, it's mainly served in, in plastic bottles of these containers, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, in containers, uh, and then you can have a jar, and you can pour it to other to drinkers, um, because it has no no not carbon dioxide, so it's easy to you know have. And uh, like Herlinda there, she shows us the typical Finnish harikka, which is the two-handed drinking vessel. Uh, I have a modern version of it. This is out of steel. Yeah, but you can, you can see it in here as well. Yeah, and this is about two liters. So, <clears throat> and this uh, usually goes around when you have a bunch of people. This goes around from hand to hand. And actually, in mm. Finland, when we toast people, we say kippis. And that that is actually... A, the the like the firmer meaning of that is that you hand over that kind of a shared glass to the next person. It's like it's your glass now in mm -hmm. Finnish, se on sun kippos. And mm -hmm. that's I mean became the Finnish kippis. So it's actually the original meaning is that you're handing over the like the drinking harika to another person. 
but yes, uh, then uh, there is like um, uh, Chris is asking that fermentation is in open cask and natural yeast usually results in sour beer. I mean, how come this is not the case with safty? Um, it's not open. Uh, some people have them open. I don't. You, you have in this smaller picture, you have a, a, a metallic. Uh, Here. That one. I have a strong uh, lit on it. And, and the, uh, the verge is um, 80 degrees hot when it goes there in. So, and it's been uh, washed before uh, by juniper water, very hot juniper water. And so, juniper is um, um, sterilizing a little bit. It's a natural sterilizer. Yeah. yeah. But let's continue. Yeah. So, I mean, if we look at the base of sahti, it's, uh, uh, it's made from malted and unmalted grains, including barley and wine. And it's kind of a regional where you can use uh, rye and you can wear nuts. And the flavors are, uh, the banana flavor is really kind of common to sahti in general. Of course, we have different types of sahti as well. But the banana flavor is, I think, something which is really common and it comes from the baking yeast and the other kind of aroma Safti very uh, often has is the juniper, juniper branches aroma. Yeah, I'll show you here. Here I have, uh, this is the normal Safti barley then, but no, mixture. Mm -hmm. It has a different kind of uh, malted barley. And this we can buy from shops as it is. And then we have this um, rye malt, about 10 to 20% of this to sati. And then of course, juniper, branches of juniper from here. And these, um, I prefer to use small branches with a little, only a little bit of wood. And then sometimes, only a few branches with uh, berries, preferably the blue ripe, ripe one. And then, of course, it, it has now gone bad. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's hops. <laughs> and uh, it, it, I, I mean, it's going to be hops. Mm, I grow my own hops. And when I brew sati, I prefer to use Finnish hops. But um, sometimes, I'm out of them, then I have to use other hops like um, uh, Northern Brewer. That's okay for that. But the interesting part is actually with the hops, we go, uh, actually we go to the hops soon. So I'm gonna tell mm -hmm. it then. But this is something that you find very interesting that actually uh, we have this one, uh, Finnish Sahti has a protected status in, in Europe. So that in order to de be described as sahti, as a beer, it must be brewed following something close to the traditional process and agreements. And this is, I mean, stated by the EU. So actually sahti is not stated by an area like lambic or ham or parma or feta cheese. It's uh, stated by the method that you brew sahti. So you can actually basically brew sahti anywhere in the world, but you should brew it with the Finnish uh, traditional process and ingredients. Yeah. And the protection we got uh, from two, two, as early as 2002. And um, in there it's listed that um, sahti must, must be at least 6% strong. So no female sati. No. <laughs> and then every Herlinda already mentioned that every year mm. for 30 years we have the Finnish Sahti brewing competition. And because Marekais have been there organizing it and winning it. So you can tell a little bit about this competition. Yeah, it's usually held on the first uh, 
weekend of August, Saturday day, and it's um, a competition where um, all, not villages, but a, a small areas have their own uh, pre-competition and the winners go to the final competition. And um, in last years, we have had about 50 or, or more competitors at the final competition. So it's um, getting harder and harder to win the competition. <laughs> well, when I won the competition at uh, 2008, yeah, <laughs> uh, there was about 35 competitors from the fin uh, all around from Finland. And, um, and is it that so that I think it's really interesting that Sahti used to be when I was a little uh, and young, Sahti was more like an older man's hobby. But now we have a lot of young people are interested about Sahti. And there's actually a lot of young people competing in the Sahti competition as well. Isn't that so? Yes, yes. More and more younger people coming with, which is very good, of course. And um, that competition, uh, Herlinda has been there and seen it, how crazy it is. But uh, uh, we, you know, we have the judges doing their job in a, one, one place, but then we have this um, parking area where we, uh, which is meant only for competitors and their sahtis. So they all gather together and then in their cars or in their may, maybe somewhat um, more sophistic, sophisticated things, they have um, uh, the, their competing, competing sahti and maybe something special sahti to serve. And then you, wander around that area with your own mug and taste mm -hmm. how many you just want. Not, nothing costs anything. You just to taste and uh, congratulations if you can taste them all. <laughs> because <laughs> after after 52 sahtis, you really know you've been drinking sahti. And then, yes, uh, this year it will be rather near Helsinki, only one and a half an hour drives, 130 kilometers from Helsinki. So it's easier to reach like uh, now, now compared to some years when we've had it rather farther away. And then there's, um, oh, there's uh, more questions and Kimmo is, thank you Kimmo, Kimmo is answering this is this, uh, for us as well. <laughs> But um, uh, we go to how to brew sahti re really quickly. But um, so, Chris, your um, question is going to be um, answered then. And how about Herlinda? Do you have a comment or a question? Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask about like, and I'm trying to remember, and I know probably other people, I don't know how many other countries are watching right now, but um, What's the average ABV, the alcohol content on sati? Does that also vary with the regions or, or the ingredients? Are you aiming for a certain? It's deceptively sneaky um, <laughs> for the for the taste and the alcohol. Um. <laughs> yeah, you can't you cannot taste the alcohol in, in sati. Yeah, but um, to my knowledge, uh, there is no regional differences between. Um, how strong the sahti is. It depends on, on the occasion. And, and usually when you have a like wedding or something, then you want to make the best sahti and then you usually make it as strong as you can. <laughs> and then there's some pictures about the sahti competition. You can see <laughs> it's really fun. Yeah, like, oh, now I lost you. Uh, the um, picture from on the left is from uh, maybe it was Jamiyarvi. Anyway, uh, it's from the department of of Susma, if I remember. Can't remember. Anyway, but no, it's from Yotsa. They have um, you know it's getting more and more alive and and um, 
diverse. They have in their department, they had, uh, of course, different sahtis, but they also had sausages and ham and music, live music. And there on the right picture, you see all the, all the winners get the special hat. Uh, it's made of, uh, what's, what is tuahi in English? It's like the, the tree, the, like the... The skin of a tree. Yeah, the skin of a tree. <laughs> yeah. Cork. Cork, cork or bark. No. Well, not cork. Bark. I think it's a more like skin. It's from birch, isn't it? Yeah. Birch, exactly. yes. Yeah. Oh, birch bark. Birch, birch bark. bark. Yes, yeah. And so um, uh, all the winners usually have their hat on when we have the competition. So everybody knows and uh, they can come to talk and, uh, and ask and, and, mm -hmm. and of course taste. And then um, also when we, uh, when our Finnish Sahti society, when we make our Sahti trips all around the world nowadays, then um, when we have a um, bus for us, our own bus driving around, then all the masters who are with traveling us, we, we have our hats there and we put them on the front of the bus. So we immediately know that, okay, now we have six masters in, in the bus. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Is any, everybody be invited to the event? Chris asks. Yes, it's open to everybody. And uh, um, because of Finnish laws, it's um, we are not allowed to take any money because they are not com commercial breweries. So everything you taste there, uh, I mean, every sahti you taste, it's free. Yeah. So welcome. <laughs> then let's talk about how to brew sahti. And this is, for example, this is the beginning. I mean, because you have to make a recipe. And this is actually a sahti that we made, Olutlit, the Finnish Consumer Union made for uh, EBCU uh, 30th birthday. So tell, tell a little bit how to make a sahti recipe, Mario guys. Uh, well, the basic idea is to um, not be in a hurry. You have to have at least uh, eight hours to brew sahti. And um, the, um, the idea is that you start from very low temperatures like uh, 30 or 40, and then you gradually uh, get it higher and higher. And um, well, I know one of my friends who makes very good sahti uh, it takes uh, about 14 hours for him to make it ready, the brewing process, I mean. But it's usually that um, um, what, what also differs from normal beers is that uh, the first batch, the first thing you do is when you have the malt, then you add only little water so that the first uh, first hour it is almost dry, just a little bit moist. And then you put more and more water, let's say every, every hour, and then it's always a little bit um, warmer. So until it reaches the temperature of 80 or, or maximum 85. And then traditionally you, um, uh, ma ma what's it? you outmash. It's um, mm -mm, without boiling, mm -hmm. but sometimes when uh, when we like when I have here in Veikkola, if we have like ten or twenty people making it, so we want to make sure that there is no unwanted particles or or things in there. So we quickly boil the bird. But, but traditionally it's not boiled. And then uh, um, about the recipe, what you have in there, 
It's just that in some parts of Finland, uh, people brew sahti only from, from barley. And in some areas, they use a lot of rye and sometimes unmalted rye. And for me, uh, we have this, we have three uh, two time winners in, in uh, Finland. And one of them, Hannu Välivita, he makes, uh, he uses a raw, bar, a raw rye. And even though his sahti is very tasty and, li- and I like it and I would like to uh, drink it, but my stomach says no because of the rye malt. Oh, I don't rye malt, the rye uh, that is raw, I mean. So let's yeah. go on. But then, as you see, you can, I mean, when you brew sahti, you can make excellent, excellent sahti bread as well at the same time, as you can see here on the on the left. Yeah, that is um, bread where, where the liquor is only sahti word. So it's very uh, sweet. And nice and, and thick and kind of... Yeah. A... And then I use sahti mash in, in it also, plus other like uh, linen seeds. And so it's all, also very healthy. Then a couple of words about the hops. There's actually, these are from, 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 from Mario Kaisa, the pictures. And um, the Finnish hops, I mean, for long we thought that in Finland, we don't have our own hops, that all the hops are planted and came from abroad. But now uh, the newest research has been showing that actually in Finland, we do have like our own hops and they've been dividing from like the international hop varieties really, really long time ago. And the Finnish hops aroma is really different. It's actually not always good. Sometimes it's little onion or garlic like, but also can be, it's really mild. And it's a little bit like a um, sarge or halertau, but a lot milder. So there is the herbness and there is the, the clean cut grass, but the aromas are really, really uh, subtle. And as I said, some of the Finnish uh, hop priorities are um, a little bit onion-like as well. But now actually uh, we have a couple of Finnish hop farmers who have started to, um, uh, grow these Finnish original ancient hops. So they say that in five to 10 years, we are actually gonna have plenty of our own hop varieties as well. But tell Marika, how do you, we how do we use hops in, in Sahti? Uh, we use it only um, at the very end. We can put it to, to the last um, phase where we, uh, lift the temperature to 80 or we can put it to the vessel where we cool it down either because it's only aromas we get we need we don't need the uh, bitterness out of them mm-hmm. and you said that we will have um, several uh, Finnish Hops, hop varieties, but uh, uh, the researchers actually wanted to get uh, a one special Finnish um, hop that is like Suomi hop. Yeah, but but there's there's actually five, five different ones. They are they, they are still studying them. Yeah, maybe they, maybe we'll we will get five different ones, but it's good. Hmm. So then if we go further. Um, this is, I mean, this is a special thing about sahti. Tell, tell a little, little bit about this. What, what, I mean, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the left building, we have this uh, vessel called kurna. It's usually long and um, it has a um, hole on the other, at the other end at the bottom and then where you see those buckets the hole is just up above them 
And uh, in that skurna, we at the bottom we put uh, juniper leaves, and as you see there, we have put the hops there. So we we do not um, heaten the hops, but we put the warm mash above them, so we get the aromas. Yes, it looks really nice. And smells so good. Oh, really, really good. Okay, there's mm. some questions. Uh -huh. um, what did they use as a spice herbs before the hops were used? Well, they used uh, juniper branches and actually lingonberry, and they used um, these um, these wild herbs that I'm really unfamiliar with in English, like wine and putki and. Um, uh, and so ancient Finnish different kind of herbs but I would say that in Sahti the main main thing is the juniper uh, branches juniper branches and berries yes yeah how about here Linda I saw that you have you have a hand oh I think I oh, actually I think it just keeps leaving my hand up but um, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> uh, I, need to, I need to learn how to like Turn that, that looks like elder flowers um, for those white flowers. That's what they look like um, to to me for California. I I noticed that when I was in Finland and I got to um, smell and taste the juniper branches themselves, they smell and taste very different in Finland than they do here in California. We use juniper and ornamental a lot in, um, in the US and they're starting to pull them out in California because they're, they're really spiky and yours are soft. Mm -hmm. Ours have like these kind of spindly and um, the, the scent isn't, it's harsh. And the scent on the Finnish juniper is, is really lovely. Uh, the branches are softer. Um, you have like softer berries on there and ours are like hard, green they look like grenades <laughs> not attractive <laughs> but um and then also the flavor too with the sati the other thing one of the other things that would be very different for people from california for beer and i mean and actually all of the u.s uh is that it's not carbonated it's mm -hmm. um more still more flat it's um, very flat yeah mm -hmm. yeah which i thought yeah which probably makes it in some ways easier to drink because you can drink more while it's uh, flat. And then um, I did bring a commercially available sate, sati with me to California, which um, <laughs> that Pekka makes too. But um, but I wanted to ask about the, like, wait, like talk about carbonation. Has anybody tried doing a commercially, uh, commercial carbonation or are they're, they're staying very traditional? The actually brewery has been doing a lot of, um, really modern interpretations of sati as well so there's been like a sati beer but they i mean you can't call it sati then you have to add like a beer style they for example being like a sati like ipa or sati like lager but or sati like ale but but they're always then different but i don't think i mean the actual sati people don't don't use high carbonation never <laughs> Oh, I would say that. <laughs> and of course, I mean, the juniper berries uh, branches are really different because, I mean, the nature is different. In Finland, I think we have a lot of subtle aromas because of the climate and because of our growing period is so short. So it, it is really different. I mean, Finnish aromas in general are really subtle ones. Okay, then let's continue. Here you can see the kurna, first filled with the juniper berry branches, and then there's the hops on the top as well. And then you see, that's not sahti word, that's uh, uh, juniper water, the hot juniper water that we use to rinse all our equipment. So it's yep. all sterile. And juniper water um, sterilizes a little bit as, as well. So it's, 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 I mean, important in that sense as well. But then we start to make the sati. He's actually, this is the um, 
uh, the Finnish Beer Consumer Union Board making sati here. <laughs> but tell Marikaisa what's happening here. Well, in the first picture on the left, we add uh, the malt to the pot. How do we call it? Pata pot? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as you see, there's not much water. You can't even see the, the water there. But then in the second picture on the right up, there is a little bit more water. That might be the second second adding of, of water. And, and then on the left, uh, the lowest picture, I can't see it. Maybe, maybe then Il Ilma has a... Uh, we, do this, oh. we do this. Okay, you, uh, yeah, you are taking the mash out of um, the pot to the kurna. And there you see the wort is running smoothly through the juniper leaves. Yes. Yeah. So that, that's how you kind of uh, uh, filter it. Yeah. Through the juniper branches. And it gives a same a really nice and subtle uh, piney kind of a aroma. But it's really subtle and nice. And then, <laughs> then that's the final um, heating up to 80 to 85 before putting it to, to the corner in that picture. Mm -hmm. I don't know why do you have this picture? <laughs> <laughs> but you see, there is a thermometer there. So nowadays we use that, but you know, earlier they did not have those thermometers. They just uh, yeah. knew from looking at the, uh, how the water was behaving and what color it was, they knew uh, how hot it was. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then after that? Then we, <laughs> this is the only uh, time when you are allowed to have a, a little bit rush because the, the sooner you get it into cold water and, and uh, cool the wort down, the better. The less time the wild yeast have time to grab into the um, wort and so. And um, this is the traditional wet method. We, we use usually lake water if it's cold enough, but uh, nowadays it's getting warmer and warmer, so we have to use tap, tap water to cool it down. <laughs> mm. And as you see, it's not open fermentation because the lid is on, so mm. it is actually not that open. Yeah, but uh, the, the lid is not uh, locked in mm -hmm. any way, so uh, sometimes it happens that the, uh, the word um, fermentates so vividly that uh, it pushes the lock away. And then I usually cool it down a bit, little bit. So I, I take a what, uh, big handkerchief and roll it around the, mm, that pot, <laughs> the thing. Mm. And then, I mean, when we cool down, we cool down the sati word. We of course drink some sati because there's always have to be some sati. And as you, you see, there's still the harika, the traditional uh, wooden sati cup, I would say, which is meant to be shared. And then of course some sati bread and sati with the fresh bridle. And that's actually uh, that was like um, I think pumpkin uh, jelly. Uh -huh. yeah. And because, I mean, actually sahti, because sahti doesn't have that strong uh, um, bitter taste because we don't use that much hops or non-hops, it's really good for making food. Mm. I mean, you can use it in stews and in uh, different kinds. This is, for example, sahti paella. And um, when we, I mean, fry everything in sahti, kind of because the sahti gives really nice little bit of uh, this caramel taste to food. So you can actually use it with different kinds of stews. You can use it with uh, uh, meat. You can use it uh, 
in uh, when you, uh, for example, um, with mushrooms, with onions, with all kind of uh, vegetables, and it gives a nice, really nice touch. Of course, depending what kind of sati it is, because we have different types of sati that I was thinking that Mario Kaiser can tell at the end, because that there's not only one type of sati, there's like different types of sati still. Yeah, but there I see Chris is uh, asking, how long does the fermentation usually take? Oh. Yes, that's an important question. Um, the, the way the style we make here in Southern Finland uh, is so that we let it uh, fermentate uh, at least three days, but we, we kind of look to the process if, it's, if the word is getting flatter. So then we can move forward, sometimes even one week, depending on how it goes, how, what the circumstances are. But it's usually fermented in room temperature, or if you have a place that is a little bit less, like 17, 19 degrees, then we use it. And then after three days to one week, then we, oh no, what's lap boilimia? <laughs> we use uh, a putki. <laughs> it's like a tube. A cube to yeah. to um, take the sahti out of uh, uh, the vessel. So because we have the yeast is at the bottom, so the um, major sahti is above the yeast. So we have to take it above the yeast and then we put it to new, uh, no, what's the word? Amberi, ei amberi, koska siis toi kannu. Like, um, what's you, you... <laughs> it's getting, oh, we're getting words. tired. <laughs> you put it the, I show you, I show you, then you know. Yeah. It's pot or pitcher. This kind of thing. The pot or pitcher. Yeah. Okay, uh, but this is only five liters, but uh, we usually put it into 10 to 20 liters pots. And then we leave it to ferment for, let's say, one week. Mm. And then, uh, then uh, you can see when the yeast goes down and, and uh, when it's dark and clear, then you can, if you are in a hurry, you can take from the top. But usually uh, with our style, uh, the sati is at, at its best uh, two weeks after the day we brew it. And then there is a, uh, 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 Chris asking that, do we filter sati? That we know we don't normally filter sati. No, we only use those juniper yeah. uh, branches, nothing else. Yeah, and you can, and Henry is asking, can you brew in any season? Yes, you can brew in any season, Sahti. Yeah. I mean, the main seasons of Sahti is midsummer, Christmas, and Easter. Like, it's normally, and of course, uh, uh, weddings and birthdays, but normally people, Finnish people are drinking most of the Sahti during uh, midsummer and then Christmas and Easter. Yeah, but if you live in those real old Sahti regions, then you cannot have any kind of party without Sahti. If you have a fu funeral without Sahti, then it's a bad funeral. <laughs> exactly. And then Chris said, I'm filtered after fermentation. No, 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 no. it's clear. It's clear. The yeast goes down and the sati above it, it's clear. Yeah. Um, clear, not, not very clear, but uh, drink, good to drink. Yes. So, you know, don't filter it. And actually, uh, sati is really good with cheeses as well, especially with blue cheese. 
the it's it's something that's really enjoyable mm. but there's like different types of sati so maybe at the end Mario guys can tell about different types of sati different types of sati yeah. i think i've already said that uh, that uh, it depends on which area you are what style you use uh, and um, uh, the main difference comes from if you use only barley or barley on rye or or maybe some other grains like oats you can use and then of course uh, there are some areas where they use um, when filtering it in the kurna, they use um, juniper tra, tree no. branches, branches, and some straws of uh, rye, mm -hmm. and they put them like um, in between, and then the word in then, and uh, they keep it. They have a lock or or. or had to the corner and they keep it there under a, a lid and uh, but then they are also areas that don't use rye at all and then the sati is very pale and it's usually sometimes also very uh, sour and it can sometimes it can be at the same time it can be sour and very sweet. Some people like it. I, I myself, I cannot drink it so much. I, I can, can, I can just taste it, but I don't like it. So yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah. You like all sour beers, <laughs> but so um, there are so big var variety of sahtis, even though the ingredients are the, almost the same. So it's kind of astonishing how different. People can yeah. make it. Yeah, we have dry sati, sour sati, but the more traditional one is like the sweet sati with like banana flavor. And now uh, we also have some sahtis spiced up with, for example, lingonberry, which is actually uh, were used anciently to spice beer. Yeah, but that is not included in the e yeah. EU regulations. No. And we are now thinking in, in our Finnish sati society that should we open it? Uh, a little bit more like uh, traditional sahtis and the, like more modern, modern. Mm -hmm. or in this case, more old, <laughs> older sahtis uh, yeah. so that people could use uh, raspberries and, and lingonberries in it. But th then I just remembered that, um, Aniko, you mentioned that we brew sahti to EBCU's 30 years birthday. And uh, you know, sahti is uh, fresh like milk. So how you can get it in good condition to Copenhagen from Finland. Finland. Mm -hmm. So uh, in my knowledge, sahti is the only beer that you can freeze. Mm -hmm. So we did. We had uh, freezing bottles, plastic ones, which you filled almost um, you have to leave leave the place for the sati to uh, freeze and uh, we had about eight bottles of them and we had them in time in Copenhagen so that we could take them out of the freeze to the refrigerator for one uh, 24 hours before the use and um, I have done an experiment in, in uh, our beer associations, Cruis, that uh, I had the same sahti uh, fresh and uh, half of it was freezed. And about 30 people tasted it without knowing which one was which. So one third of them, they said, there's no difference at all. One third of them said uh, the freeze one is better, and one third said that the, the fresh was better. So it it can be done. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, there's ice boxa. Somebody says. <laughs> well, yeah, basically it is ice ice boxa. <laughs> So, a couple of minutes about we are past our time, but a couple of questions. If you have any questions now, it's the time to ask about Sahti. Um, but thank God you've been asking a lot of questions, which is really good. Yeah. <laughs> about this have... icebox Sahti, I uh, came to my mind. I've sometimes made uh, Sahti sna snaps so that I freeze the Sahti and, and then took the most of the water away and then freeze again. You can do it, but the, then the sati has to be excellent in condition when you start. If there is a slight um, mistake, then it kind of multi multiplies at the end. But it was interesting, very drinkable, small amount. <laughs> um. Do we know any European breweries which are not finished who make sati? Uh, I know that there is a Poland, in Poland there is a brewery who makes sati, but I heard that it's, um, it doesn't taste like sati. Uh, I've heard <laughs> the same that uh, many people have tried it. Even now our Pekka Kärjänen from our Finnish society, sati society has made it, tried to make it in USA. But it didn't go well. Yeah, because the ingredients mm. are so, so different. And Martin says that sati snaps it's in the UK, it's illegal. Well, actually, I think in commercial way, it's illegal in Finland as well. So, <laughs> well, no, no, it's 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 legal in when you have commercial licenses yeah, to yeah. brew. Yeah, but we don't have that many commercial licenses. But yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Okay, oh. I, I, I think I want to say thank you to both of you. A fantastic, uh, fantastic presentation, and it's um, I definitely got the feel for being in in Finland, and uh, <laughs> the pictures made that really, uh, really good. I certainly remember it, and and it certainly was a familiar taste in some ways because cash conditioned beer in the UK has got that low carbonation effect, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a wonderful. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, that was brilliant. And 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 on behalf of everybody, thanks to uh, Aniko and um, Maya Kaiser. And uh, we'll see everybody. Um, uh, this presentation will be uh, on the EBC website. So look out for it. Uh, we'll take a break over the summer and we'll start with some more all about beer workshops. If you've got an idea, if you'd like to push, publish a, a presenter workshop, on a beer style that's uh, important to you, then get in touch. Um, you can con you can contact me directly through Brett Laniosh at ebcu.org.uk. You'll find my details on the website. So I, I, again, thank you very much to our presenters. It was absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. You had very good questions. Yes. Yeah, and thanks to everyone for the questions. Cheerio, everyone. But goodbye. Bye. Cheerio. Bye bye. bye.